Um, so in the first couple chapters of, uh, in book one, Gitanyo introduces multiples and it's multiples of small numbers, three. Yeah, they couldn't hear me. They left and came back. I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> there they are again. Um, I'm having troubles. But when he gets to book two, he starts with pens. And I think um, there's a reason for that. And I think what we're looking to do, he never tells you anything, which is kind of frustrating. So you have to guess <laughs> what's going on based on the exercises. And he works really hard to help you figure out the difference between something like three times, and it's easy to see, three times 10 um, plus, say four times 10 versus four, three times four times 10. So what we're going to be able to do is break apart. And, and so for us, we're still dealing with, when we deal with the tens, we're still dealing with numbers like three and four instead mm -hmm. of like 33 or 36 or something like that. We still have that three and that four and we can really break them apart and add them back together. We're still working with numbers inside of 10. So we can get this whole idea of um, multiplication, when it's multiplication, when it's addition, clear in their minds before we move on to other stuff. That's my best guess. And I'm, just, I'm guessing that based on the exercises that he has listed there. I'm gonna pull this apart. So we have, um, so he'll say one times 10 is 10. And then we can write 20 as two times 10. And 30 as three times 10, we're gonna go all the way up and he does nine times 10. We get to 90 and then we're going to, he does the breaking apart of these. So he will say, um, you know, what is 20 plus 30? Well, what we wanna do is count the number of tens, two tens plus three tens. So that gives us five tens and that's a 50. Like there's a pattern that shows up. So we have three, three of the tens plus five of the tens. Oh, three of the tens plus two. Those are two and they're going to equal five. So we have these two here. We can just add these together. And now we have five of the tens and that's 50. And that's the same as this. And he'll have you, he'll have the kids break it apart in, in all the possible ways. One times one, one of the tens plus four of the tens, uh, 10 plus 40, uh, you know, 20 plus 30, three of the tens, two of the tens. I guess all there is for 50. Um, but all the way up to the number nine, or up to 90. Then um, we will do fractions and we can start seeing how these are related. So if we've done five times 10 equals 50, one fifth of 50 equals, what will that be? 10. You are catching on. Okay. <laughs> A third of 10. So if we have uh, three times 10 equals 30, what will a third of 30 be? Well, that's going to be 10. And then we have, um, let's see, we have six of the tens 
equals 60. And now we're going to get a little tricky. What is half of 60? Ooh. But if we know, if we know that 5 times 10 equals 50, that we can take half of 6 here. So we know that's half of 6 and add 10. Because we can do this, half of 6 times 10. How would they know to do that? They only know to do that because we worked early on in multiplication in book one by playing around. This is why people, they want to skip book one and you can't because you, the stuff doesn't make, doesn't make sense when you get here, like how the kids would know they could do that. They would know they could do that, that we could break this apart because we played the substitution game back earlier and we did things like um, uh, two times uh, six times five and we did two times five times six. And we know that it doesn't matter how you multiply them, that it's gonna be the same. So the same applies to fractions. And so they will be able to pull that apart and they'll know that they can do half of six times, half of six, which is three times 10. And that will give them 30. And this was not a big jump for my son. This was, this was no big deal at all. And he yeah. didn't even do the half of the six. He just reasoned that from this pattern here, five times 10 is 50. So half of six is going to be 30. And I just add, or it's going to be three. I'm just going to add a zero. Like that's the, that's his self-talk that goes on. Oh, I'm just going to add a zero because it's, and then you can go from here to what is half of, it's not in the book. But you can go from here if we've got half of six, half of 60. Well, now we can do half of 600, half of 6,000, half of 60,000, half of 6 million, because the principle is still the same. All right. So this is the intermingling of, and, and if you are the, 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 the factors and fractions and division, like this. He really works hard in this, in book two, to really, if they haven't, you know, you were asking Claire the last time, do the kids catch on that the, how the factors and fractions are related? And my son didn't get it until recently. And we've been doing this now several years and it finally was an aha moment. Oh, look, they're all the same. And you know, we've only mm -hmm. been writing them over and over and over again and it finally dawned <laughs> on him. But he's really pushing this here without telling the kids what's going on. Yeah. Um, he's pushing them to see it, to have that aha moment. But he's not assuming that they've got it. So you keep working it over and over and over again. <coughs> and that tells you- Which is a very tricky right thing way. with my son who never does anything more than once. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> He doesn't want to, well, the, if he gets it, if he gets it, I don't know that there's a reason to keep pushing it. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I know. But sometimes there are things he hasn't got and I have to fit, try and find another way to do it that, that he doesn't feel like exactly the same thing as yesterday and keep, yeah, attacking it from, but yeah. So one of Just the things that I, like, he doesn't have you do this, but one of the things, um, at least he's got these really great materials for it. Um, and then Madeline Guitard talks about it a lot in Mathematics with Children, is that once you've done kind of this thing, and we've done it haphazard, is to then take all of your information and put it in a chart. So we can start paying attention and see if we can find any relationships. And then you're kind of really making it overt. Um, but you have to have a kid that's able to organize information to do that. So mm -hmm. if you're not able to organize the information, you're going to get stuck organizing it for them. And then they're going to, the whole point. And they're still not doing the mind work. Yes. And so you're going to have to wait until you. Until they're ready. Yes. Until they're ready for that. And there's, and there's no point in pushing them because, you know, as you're looking at this and Catania is assuming he's teaching it, you know, these are the exercises he would do with a kid it tells me that they're not all catching on the first time around in book one. So he keeps bringing it back around. So 
there isn't, I don't know that there's like a, a, a point at which all children get it. Yeah. You know, some are going to get it early, some are going to get it late, and they all fall on the spectrum of normal. Mm. <coughs> so, all right, so we did the partitions of multiples of 10, and we'll do the fractions of multiples of 10. And then the next thing that happens is we're going to introduce having and doubling. And he's going to do this with all the numbers. Well, but not all the numbers, various numbers, because we did one through 20 in book one, and now we're on like numbers. Well, we start all over with one, and we're going to work our way up to a thousand. But I'm going to um, take two examples with 10 and um, 12, and then we're going to just work through um, a lot of these exercises with the number of 11, just because I happen to like that number. <laughs> and that's what I picked. And we'll see how far we get. And if we get to the end, we will do, um, we'll start work on the distributive property, which is kind of an interjection into where Catenio is going. But it's one that I think he should have put here and he didn't. It would make life easier had he really worked on it and he didn't do it. So, so you're just kind of like fumbling around in the dark. So we're going to do, we have three times 10. You know, three times 10, and that is going to be the same. He's going to have you find the factors, and we're going to, um, and he has you look on the chart to find three times 10, the product chart. You don't necessarily need to do that, but if you want to. And I would have them build a train of three times 10. So we got here. Because we're just trying to, to make the three times 10, and then we're going to get our, our fives out here. And that is the same as how many fives? That will be six of the fives, and that equals 30. So here's the first one. And then I'm going to do another one. I'm going to run out. So here's this one. Look at this one. Here's the statement up here. I'm going to, I would like to put them side by side. And if I had kids doing this, I would put them side by side, but I don't have enough rods here to do it. Now we have four times 10. Four times 10. And that is the same as. 8 times 5, and that equals 40. What do we notice about this statement and this statement? Like, what are the, some of the things that you would, that you see? I see that you've got um, twice as many fives as you have tens. Okay. So... Two times uh, the number of fives as the number of tens. Anyone else? Two times the number of four to get eight. So you doubled four, so we. We doubled four. We get eight. You know, they have these really cool mouse pens and they don't work. And I it's really so, must be one. so frustrating. <laughs> Handwriting is hard. Numbers aren't so bad anymore. And not too much is not bad. Okay, so we doubled four to get eight. So is there is there anything similar to that up here? Yeah, we double. double. We doubled three to get six. There we go. Nice. 
Uh, anything else? You have five. So if you have ten, you get five. You get five. So I, I noticed from what you guys said that this one doubled right here is two times and these two here were halved. These, this one as this one doubled, this one have. So the question we have is, will this pattern continue to play out? So I don't know. Let's just try this with um, the number 12. Shall we? I think we should. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I'm going to clean my desktop. And so we're going to build a 12. I'm going to probably run out of rods. So let's just do, well, here we go. So we have two 12s. Two times 12, and that equals 24. So we can double our two. That'll be four. And let's have our 12 and see if that works. By George, it does. So what happens now, let's see if we could do this. So, so this is half, and this is double. What will happen if we um, multiply one by three, 12? We multiply this one by three, and we divide this one by three, we'll get two. We're back there again. <gasps> So that's tripling. So if we have one and we double the other, so this one we doubled, have, or we doubled this one, we have this one, but this one we're gonna divide by three and this one we would multiply by three. So if we have or triple, whatever we do to one, if we do the opposite to the other, the quantity stays the same. And this is the principle that with the having and the doubling and the tripling, is um, how we're going to learn to multiply a lot of the numbers between one, between um, 20 and a thousand or one and a thousand is by having doubling and tripling. You can throw in fives and sevens um, along the, the same way because those are also prime numbers <clears throat> and get most of the numbers and you'll learn a lot of math by doing that. But ha the having, doubling and tripling are, are the big ones and they're going to get you most of the the way most of the stuff that you need to learn. And so those are really important and we can use this, the having, doubling and tripling, um, you can use to make short work of the, uh, if they know how to have double and triple, then most of the work of the, the, the multiplication table is done. They don't have to memorize anything. If they, and we'll do this next, not next time, but the time after. So we'll do the distributive property first and then we'll work on the multiplication table. So, um, but there's no need to force your kids to do drills on the multiplication table. It would be better that they spent a lot of time understanding how the numbers were created than that they just memorize all isolated facts. So we're going to um, work on the number 11. I'm gonna, without the rods, I'm going to erase all this. 
And so he would do the same basic thing. He'd pick a number and we're going to just work on it. And the 11 we can't use the towers for. Um, we're not using towers or we can, but we're not going to. So I'm going to start out with um, 2 times 11. And that will be what? Anyone? 22. 22. And we can double that. And then we can double it. And we can double the 2. So that'll be if we want to, that'll be four times 11. And that will be what? It doesn't equal. Four times 11 will be, of course, 44. So two times 11 is 22. And we doubled, we want to double this. And now we have four times 11, which is 44. So that now we have two times two times 11. What else could we name this? This two times two times 11. Because we can take- Two this squared two times 11? Oh yeah, now we have two squared times 11. Because we know that when we, that a square is some number multiplied by itself. So he doesn't introduce the higher exponents, but you can. There's nothing in book two. He doesn't introduce it, but we did it like as soon as we did squares, we did cubes. Is you know we started working with the towers. This is in factors. We went here right away because you as soon as the kid, if you write out factors, so it's the same principle all the way across. You know when do you do seven x or or seven because it's not an x. You know, seven red. When do you when do you introduce seven red? Is is when they get sick of saying red plus red plus red plus red. So as soon as they get sick of saying two times two times two times two times three, when you factor a number, when they want to find a better way to say that, then you would show them they'll want to say three. Their their tendency is going to be say seven of the twos seven times two. And that's not, it's not seven of the twos. It's seven times itself, two times itself, seven times. And then, so we would put two to the seventh. So we have to, and that early work with the, the addition and the multiplication is really important by separating, knowing the difference between factors and partitioning. So, but as soon as they're ready and they're irritated, then you can introduce them. And for us, it was right away. So my son's doing exponents and we're still in book two above squares. All right, so we have two to the second times 11. Um, let's see, so what would um, eight times 11 be? So we're gonna double this four. So now we have two times two times two times 11, or which equals eight times 11. And that is? 88. Oh my gosh, look at how brilliant you are. <laughs> <laughs> now what do we have over here? How else can we write this? This one right here. Two cubed. Two cubed times 11. All right. So you look at all of these up here. What is half of 22? 11. Half of 22 equals 11. All right, let's do a quarter of 44. Eleven. 
11. I bet you can tell me what <laughs> an eighth of 88 is, can't you? It's not 11, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it would be. Oh my goodness. So here we have again the multiplication. And then we have the fraction. So, but let's also look at this. So we have 22, we got 11. And we doubled this number over here. So we doubled it, we got 44. And we also, here we have the denominator over here also doubled. <clears throat> so when we went from a fourth of 44, when we get to here, we also notice that this one doubles. This doubles and this doubles, we still have 11. So what do you think a third of a, so we do, let's do, okay, well, let's do three times 11, and that's going to give us what? Thirty-three. I, I was just going to answer. And now let's do, let's triple that one. In tripling, we're going to enter this, we double, we've introduced doubling, and so when we introduce tripling, or he calls it troubling. So we triple a number, that means we multiply by three. So can we do triple 33? It's 99. Okay. So that will give us uh, nine times 11 equals 99. Now we could have we could have done here, what are our options if we were going to triple this number? What two options did we have to go from here to here, to, to go from 33 to 99? I wrote nine times 11, but we could have written this another way. Oh, three times three times 11, or three squared times 11. Three squared times 11 equals 99. But I could have gone to um, three times 33 as well. And I could have tripled the 11 instead of tripling mm -hmm. the three. So I want to double 33 to get to 66. And how else, how can I get there? Anyone? So two times two times three times eleven. Okay. So two times three times eleven. So I could have so two times three times eleven. So I could have doubled this one. And I would have got 6 times 11 equals 66. Or I could have multiplied the 2, and I could have, or I could have doubled 11, either one of those. And I would have had 3 times 22, and that would have also got me to 66. And we were going back earlier when I said we have one and we double the other. So if we double one number, one of the things that we notice is that if we double one, then this number doubles. What do you think will happen if we double both? You multiply it by four. Or you do a double double. You do a double double, you're going to multiply it times four. So we don't tell them that. We want them to figure it out. So what do you think? So that's the question you have. So what do you think will happen if? So Gitanyo has it and he tells you what to do. So if you have young kids, there's two ways to do it. He tells you what to do and then he has you make an observation. Uh, Madeline Guitard has, and this is mostly the way I approach it. What do you think will happen if? And then we first make predictions about what will happen. And then we actually go to the task and see what will happen. <clears throat> and then we make our observations. All right. Let's see. 
So a third of 33 is going to be what? 11. 11. So what is half of 66 going to be? A third. So, so here, here I want to notice that. So we have a 33 here and our, um, I'm going to introduce this now because I don't think I can really do it without. It's much easier to see if we do it with the rods. So if I have 11 and I multiplied it times three, so we have, now we have 33. So this is what we would call a cross. So 33 times 11, and then we multiplied it times 2, and now we have 66, and then we multiplied it, but over here, so that gave us 66, and this one gave us 99. So a third of 33, this is 33, we take out a third, we're going to divide that by 3, that gives us 11. Do you see our factors here? And now we have 2 times 3 times 11, and we want half of 66. So we can pull out that two, this factor of two, and what remains of our tower here is what? 33. 33. Well, what would happen if I pulled out, so then we have this, what is a sixth? We pull out our six, two times three, a sixth of 66 will be? 11. 11. A third of 66, let's pull out the three, will be what? 22. 22. All right. And this here. And now at 99, we all agree we're at 99. 11 times three times three. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to pull out the three. I want a third of 99. And what do I have? 33. 33. And a ninth of 99 will be? 11. 11. <laughs> okay. So I want to do um, right here. This has 66, right? Yep. All right. So half of 66 is? 33. 33. All right. A sixth of 66 is? 11. What is two sixths of 66? Ooh, 22. So, oh, wait, what did you do? Well, I doubled. So you knew what, you knew what um, one sixth was. So you doubled it. So what yeah. will four sixths of sixty six be? Forty four. Okay. So um, what will six sixths of sixty six be? Sixty six. And what will eight sixths of sixty six be? Eighty eight. So can you tell me how you got to 88? I put another two on it, okay. another two sixths. That's one of the ways I did it. Ah, okay, wait a second. What did you do? So you knew that two sixths. So we said um, that two sixths was 22, so I added that to six to six. Plus six sixths of 22 equals eight six of 66 yes i'm getting there <laughs> wrote the wrong one down the two six of 66 plus six six of 66 equals eight six of 66 which is the same as 22 we said plus Six six equals 88. Now we have a pattern. 
for adding fractions. We notice that the bottoms stay the same. Well, okay, what do you notice about this? So I'm not teaching this well. What do we notice mm -hmm. about the bottom number? It hasn't changed. What do we notice about the top? We're adding them together. Adding, adding them. So we didn't have to didactically teach them. They, every child that I have ever met has been able to do this part. They get this. So they can mm. reason their way through. And then from here, from getting here, we can make a rule and we can see, we can try this out with, um, now we can go back, we have these fractions, right? So how would we add a, a half of 22 plus a fourth of 44? How would we do that? We have all of these fractions. We know what the numbers are. And now we can go along and figure out what are the rules for adding and subtracting or adding, well, at this point, just adding fractions. We could subtract numbers the same way. So we're playing around with this. It leads right into this whole work with fractions. I'm not going to go there because that's a whole class on fractions. But this is where it takes you without having this is this now intuitive knowledge of fractions that they come up with without having to have them remember. All right, so we did over 22, what time is it? This is not really enough time to get into distributive property. So we can play with towers some more because I really like them a lot. And you can see how they work. We kind of did this. Didn't we do this last time, though? I, I feel think like we did a bit. It. I've taught so many classes, I can't remember where I taught what. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys have anything you want to go over? How about we'll do that? I'll tidy up my rods. I, I have a, a small question. Okay. I know you probably don't um, assign an age to any of these kind of things and you do it at the child's ability, but in a general range, what age child would be doing this kind of activity? First grade. Okay. Um, but um, if they're behind, you know, so um, if they had a really, if, I'm going to say first grade um my son's in second and we're doing this now so mm -hmm. um and this stuff shows up in book two so um i could get a probably a first grader um here by the end of first grade if you haven't had a solid foundation so let's say mom isn't really good at math she's not really good at math and she is she has a hard time figuring out where she's going to lead lead junior Freedoms, whatever you want to call them, then I, this is probably not going to happen till the, you know, sometime second grade, maybe even end of second grade, early third grade. Uh, this is very hard work, complex work, I think, for most little kids to understand if mom's didactically teaching it. If we can draw it out of the child, it's much easier and happens faster. So this is going to all depend mostly on the quality of teaching and not on the ability of the child. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> and I, I mean, I, we did, we stayed in, and this was really, really helpful to me. So we did, in our house, we stayed in chapter three of book one, of, of the first book for 18 months. Because I was learning math for the, like, over again, all over again. And um, so once we got out of chapter three, like, it was just fascinating to me, all this stuff I'd missed. Like, it was like a great algebra course. Like, oh, my goodness. This is like first-year algebra. Here it is, and in, 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 we're going to do this in kindergarten. We spent so much time there, and I was a little concerned as we got out of book one that we were going to be behind, and we're now starting. So we were in there, like, till first grade, like a long time, and finished mm -hmm. book one in first grade. And I was a little concerned because, you know, like all you, you go out and the neighbor kids are going to school and they're, you, you feel like they're, they're further ahead than your kids are. But then as soon as we hit book two, 
Like we went working from working with numbers inside 20 to numbers up to a million in 45 minutes. We were adding and subtracting numbers inside of a million. Um, he can double numbers in his head, um, up, up to 5,000. You can pick any number and he can double it in his head now. So the principles that we laid down, so I would say we're working in all the way up into book seven, which was meant for fifth grader, now in second grade because we laid all that work down. But I know that if you, you know, somebody who was more, who was better at math than I am, or who understood more than I did when I started, I think I could take a child through all of that same work now that took me 18 months and about three and a half months. So, yeah, that makes complete sense. Anything else? All right. Well, we can play with more towers because I like these. The towers are the crosses. Well, so here's a cross and, and, and a cross would be, and how you, this is what we would do. So if you, if you're familiar with like Matthew C or Mortensen's, they're going to build it and they're going to leave it like this and they're going right. to, and this will be, I think it's a cross and up. So this would be 10 times three. And they're going to leave it like this. And we're not. So we have 10 times three. And so we would replace this and we would start it out with a cross when the kids first start playing around. We want them, or we would start with this rectangle and we would have them build the rectangles, but then we would show them that this is This is three. So we could just remove these. So, and then we can add rods on the top so we can keep multiplying. So we can do 10 times three times two, and we can throw on a four if we want to. We can just keep piling them as high as we want to, but I'm gonna take out that 10. I'm gonna put something in here like this. We have six and three and two. Here, I'll put them this way so that we can see what's underneath. There we go. All right. So we have here six times three times four times two. And that will be what? Anyone? Hundred and forty four. We all agree. Eighteen. We double it to thirty six. We double it again. Seventy two. We double it again to one hundred and forty four. I agree. The other agree. way was six times two plus three times four, which is twelve times twelve. <gasps> Wait, what did you say it was? <laughs> six times six times two. Six plus times two plus times times three times four. Yeah. Equals a hundred and forty four. Ah, let's keep playing. This is how we play this game. <laughs> You're getting good at this. So we, have, so we have, so we can rewrite that as 12 times 12 equals 144. So I want to know what um, one sixth of 144 is. Okay. It would be 12 times two, right? Ah. So we've got over here, it's 12 times two. So it's what? 20, 24. Right? I don't out actually the, know that it's 24, but it, yeah. We pulled out the six and we have, we have three times four is 12 times two. It's 24. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's put this back. Oh, we got to do it this way. 
All right. Let's do, um, let's do 136th of 144. Two. Two? Mm hmm Because you take out the mm -hmm. six and the two times three. Oh, no, it's six. four, right? And the two and the three. Four. It's four. Okay, another one. Anything you notice? So you guys just give me ones that you see. Like other fractions? Or? Other fractions or division? Even division. Okay. Let's see how many we can come up with before we have to go. One eighth of 144. We have an eighth of 144 is. I said 18. 18. Okay, so we take out the 2 and the 4, and we have what's left is, so 1 eighth of 144 is the same as, we could do 6 times 3. And write the same way. You could just leave the, we can leave that up there as just the other factors if we want to. One twelfth of one hundred and forty-four. Twelfth of one hundred and forty-four equals twelve. Now, how about, how many more multiplication statements? We can I'll, let's try multiplication statements too. Then, okay. so from this one, I could devise thirty-six times four. If if a 36th of 144 equals 4, then 36 times 4 equals 144. What else can I learn from that? Um, 18 times 8 is 144. 18 times 8 is 144. And what 1 18th of 144 would be what? 8. 8. And a fourth of 144 would be what? 36. 36. 36. So. You could say two times 72 is 144. Two times what? 72. 72 equals 144. So she took out our two. So we would also know from that that half of 144 equals 72. 72. And 172nd of 144 would be 2. Don't you love, you see what happens when we, when we, like if we take it out of the rectangle and then you put all the factors in. And we can break this yeah. down even further if we wanted to, because these are not prime factors. So we still have another right. two and a three in here. So we have this and this, and we have another two and another two. I think you got another three yet. I didn't put the three in? Or did I lose a three? Yeah, you oh. have the three. Okay. And you can't see them. You would have to, like, this is easier if you build. And it's really important that you don't just look at these, that the kids are actually physically removing the rods from the towers and seeing what's left. And once they can double, we get the habit of doubling in, that that it's really easy when you have three and you double it, double it, double it, double it, that we can get there very quickly. We don't have, there's not a lot of calculations to make. We're just doubling numbers over and over again once they get really good at it. So 
we have here 2 to the 4th times 3 squared equals 144. So I want to know what 1 over 3 squared of 144 is. 2 to the 4th. 2 to the 4th. And then, <laughs> and what, will, what is 2 to the 4th? 16. Ah, 16 equals 16. I worked it out another way. Okay, go ahead. I said half of six is three. So if we say three times three is nine, one ninth of 144, you take three off the six, you're left with three. So that's three times four times two. Uh, sorry, three times. No, I've lost it. <laughs> two to the fourth times three. Right, you're just taking one of the threes out? Or is it a ninth? He, yeah, he lost it. But so all the options are sitting here now to do, to just spend time playing. We've got 144 playing with this, just this structure alone. How much is just sitting here? Like you could do several days on this. And that, how do you introduce this? Like, do you just give, okay, 144, let's half that? And to um, find all the factors or? So how Gutenio starts out is back in book one, he starts out with just the crosses. And then he okay. has you pick it, he, he just picks a number and he has you double it, double it again, double it again. Okay. So, um, so we just did this as, as in our house, it's just a fun game. We, we just call it doubling. And so, um, so I would, I would have, I would pick, we just start at any number and just double it until we got to a number that it was just exhausting for all of us to mentally keep track of it. <laughs> That's funny. We, we did the opposite by accident today. She was drawing a ruler and trying to understand the increments on the ruler. And so we halved it and then we halved our halves and half our quarters, and then half our eighths. So that is a really good exercise because there is um, to understand what's happening when we multiply fractions. Because you know when we tell people that um, tell kids that um, multiplication is is just um, repeated addition, mm -hmm. right? Well, right. What is this? Like, how do you repeatedly add a quarter of a half? Like, what is well, that you take mean? a half and you <laughs> <laughs> see, because I see that as a number line, which is what you're saying. If you use a ruler, if you use an American ruler, then you can see that on the number oh, line. But yeah. that's what I think of. And I actually think of it as a quarter of a jump to a half, right? So it is, it's a, um, repeatedly adding a half, but only if you view it that way. Right, like, or, or so then you'll have the, uh, the new one that has come out as we would say it's groups of. I don't even yeah. know how That's to make amazing. sense of a quarter of a half a group. Yeah. So when, it, when we talk about like when you do it on the ruler, that's really good or, or putting it up here um, when you see this and you have, well, let's not do that one because it doesn't divide well into quarters. Yeah, we used the eighths because that was a natural yeah. division, and that's how, other than sixteenths, which I didn't want to get to sixteenths, the eighths was the natural division for what happens in the English inch. Yeah, yeah. so we can do, yeah, so now we have a half, half. And, now I need and then you another half, half your half, and then we half, half of a half, right, half of a half, and then we also looked at the patterns um from that so you start out with eight and you, half the 
when you, I, how many you have. So you have one inch and then two halves and four fourths and one and eight eighths. We did, we did something else too. Let's see if I can jog my memory where we looked at other patterns. I think one of the most useful things for me in this method is the um, I notice and I wonder. <laughs> yes, I, I would agree with you. So I'm going to show you something that is pretty spectacular. And just because I can, we're over time and it doesn't really matter. But we're going to talk about multiplying fractions together. A set of fractions. So let's do... Two-fourths of four-sevenths is just two-sevenths. Ta-da! <laughs> Wait, I do that again. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. Hey. Do that again for me. Two-fourths of four-sevenths is two-sevenths. That's oh, fine. got it. Okay. Okay. So if I had two fourths of four eighths would be two eighths. Two eighths. Right. Two eighths. We just pull that middle one out. So one mm -hmm. of the tricks you learn, you have to understand why. Don't just show this as a trick. Right. All right. So we have, uh, Two fours of four eighths is just two eighths. And that's also, you know, one fourth. <clears throat> when you go to do this, you can just change this one so that this bottom number and this top number match. And then you just have to take the numerator and the denominator from the other sides. Right. Pass them off. <laughs> but I love that you just pull out the rod. It's just the visual. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And, yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, no It way. took me a minute, but yeah. Yeah, you want to know, you have this much here, and you want to know what this portion of this in relation to this is, and you just take it out, and there it is. <clears throat> All right. Anything else? So next week we're going to, yeah, we'll do the distributive property. And then I am going to be in Portland for Christmas on the 19th and the 26th. It will not be here. So next week will be the last time we meet. And then also on the 2nd of January, I will be doing some work with hopeful and victory. So I doubt that we will meet the 19th, the 26th or the 2nd. So after next time, next week, the next time we will meet will be like January. What will it be? 9th. Just so you guys know. Are these um, weekly at around the same time now at their, the evenings, yeah, Wednesdays yep. at 9.30? Okay. Yeah, Wednesdays at 9.30 till I'm done with multiplication. And then I will change the date and time, the, the day and the time completely again. Just because I try and get the most number of people in. Mm -hmm. and, um, and Claire's been wanting to come, but she hasn't been able to come because, you know, she's in Australia. Oh, wow. 